Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ellie and I am currently a space systems optimization engineer working for a space company. But prior to that, I have just finished my master's at the University of Cambridge where I studied a master's in maths. I am out of university now, but I've had a lot of experience writing dissertations, which is why I'm bringing this video out on my channel. I've had a lot of people ask for this video and I appreciate that you may be in a position now where you have already started your dissertation so this video might have been more useful before starting but that's okay there are some very important aspects i'm going to talk about in this video that hopefully no matter where you are in your dissertation journey at the moment this video will be of use to you so as a bit of background before i studied my masters at cambridge i was at leeds for three years at the university of leeds studying maths again and my dissertation was on using random numbers to solve problems in maths and physics uh, and I was able to score 91% in that dissertation and I got top of the year out of a class size of about 300, over 300 students. So I was very pleased with that. And then on my master's, I did a thesis and that was on wave attractors in rotating and stratified fluids. And I obtained a percent of 87%, which again, I cried over because I was so happy about it. So I have a bit of experience when it comes to writing dissertations and first class quality dissertations. So that's why I'm bringing this video out to you. So that's a bit of an introduction about me, you know, my experience. The rest of this video is going to be very structured. I'll leave timestamps in the description if you want to navigate around the video a little bit better. But yeah, let's get stuck in. So this first point might seem quite intuitive. How do you even choose your dissertation? So I'm going to be speaking speaking in this video very specific to my experience as a math student and hopefully this will carry across a lot of STEM degrees and hopefully maybe non-STEM degrees as well. So for me at my both my undergrad and my master's we got given a big list of projects that we could have chosen. So first of all you have quite a daunting task of going through however many dissertation topics you have. I think on my master's there was over a hundred which was quite scary and you know you have to go through and choose which topic you think is best. So for me I realised what area of maths I enjoyed the most and this is something that I say on my channel a lot. If you love what you do you will do so much better in it and my attitude towards my dissertation on both my courses was to just pick something that I enjoy because then when it comes to doing research in that area I'm going to love it. So that's kind of point number one in this how to choose a dissertation find something that you think will you will genuinely enjoy that might be quite a broad category for me i i just loved anything to do with fluid dynamics and there were a lot of projects that were in fluid dynamics so what i did was i then said okay i've picked the area that i want to go into now i'm going to go through all of the projects that have that area involved in them and i'm going to list them in order of which i think i'm going to enjoy the most now that might seem like quite an easy task but there might be a point where you look at some dissertations and think, I cannot choose between these two. And this is where this next piece of advice comes in really handy. And I think this is something that if you look at the list of projects and you find one immediately and you say, this is the one that I want to do, this next point I think is very important. So what I would recommend doing is once you have a list, you know, say you've got your top three or you have your top one, go and speak to the supervisor that is running that project. Because when I say this, and it's very important, a supervisor can make or break your dissertation. If you are working with someone who is not helpful at all, is very unenthusiastic about what they do. In my experience, that was not the case. I had incredible supervisors, absolutely incredible. But there might be a topic that you really, really want to do and really enjoy, but that you don't click with the supervisor that well. So what I would recommend doing is get your list of dissertation topics you think you're interested in, go speak to the supervisor, see what their goals for the for the project is because I was very lucky in both my dissertations that I had free reign as it were I could go and I could explore any area within that topic and I had a lot of fun doing that so was, there was a lot of flexibility I think it's important to speak to the supervisor see what their goals for the project are and if they say well I want to go down this very specific route then look at that and see if that's something you'd enjoy because the last thing you want to do is pick a topic that you think sounds amazing, go into it, have an awful supervisor and have to do something in that topic that you don't enjoy. So it's very important to speak to the supervisor and see the overall goals of the project that you'd be doing. Something else that I found quite important when I was looking at projects was to look at the reading list. Most projects, I believe, for, for myself anyway, had a reading list. If there isn't one, reach out to the supervisor and ask, you know, is there one that I can, that I can look at? 
because that is where you'll find material similar to the project you're going to be working on and have a look at it and see if you'll enjoy it because it's very easy to to see a topic and think that sounds amazing and then when you delve deeper into it you're like actually this math is not for me so it's important to look at what topics you'll be learning look at similar resources that they have on the project description and see if that's something that you want to do another thing that i would say is don't put all your eggs in one basket i made this mistake in third year so my undergrad we got given a list of all the projects and then we had to rank them and that's how my undergrad did it and my masters it was here's a list of topics as many people can do that one topic as they want there was a difference there so my masters was very much you can just choose any topic once you've narrowed it down you can go and study that topic which is great i like that my undergrad was list your top 10 i think it was like there was a lot we can't guarantee you'll get your first choice but you'll get hopefully within your top five choices or something like that and I saw this one project I think it was like computational methods in applied mathematics and one of the sub subcategories was in I think planetary motion or something and buzzwords I was like oh my gosh that sounds amazing I want to, I want to do that put that as my first choice and my second choice was the project I ended up getting and I remember having a bit of like, I don't know why, I just had this meltdown because I was like, I can't believe I haven't got my my t my topic, the one that I really wanted. And yeah, I, I, I don't know why I was so upset, but I think it was just I was really excited to, to do this topic. Yeah, a, a lesson, you know, a piece of advice is if you don't get your first topic, it's okay. For me, mine worked out way better than I could have imagined. It was a topic that I didn't think, like I put it as my second choice because I thought it sounded really cool, but I ended up loving it so much. There was a high level of computation, computational element in there. So I got to code in Python. I love coding, that was incredible. I had two of the most amazing supervisors for it. One of them was like my, I was lectured by him, Dr. Mike Evans in second year. And he was my favorite lecturer at Leeds. Honestly, like one of my favorites. And I had him as a supervisor and he was just, amazing honestly so amazing and it, yeah I just had like the best time and I ended up getting top of the year in my dissertation so for me it's this is kind of like a life lesson I guess a life lesson a dissertation maths life lesson <laughs> I don't know don't put all your eggs in one basket it's okay if you don't get your top choice one last thing that I'm going to say on this topic is maybe having a look at what prerequisite material is required for this specific project because there might be projects that require certain prerequisites and it's important that you have those prerequisites because you will struggle if not so there were certain projects that I looked at that you needed I think fluid dynamics for them was an example and students who hadn't done that couldn't couldn't take that so it's important to look at the prerequisites and see if you have a good knowledge because it makes your life a lot easier if you do I was fortunate that my both of my dissertations were kind of new to me really they were yeah they were they were completely brand new and i really enjoyed that element of learning something new but there were certain parts where i was like i i a bit of the background knowledge that i have already has helped with this so that's one last last piece of advice on choosing a dissertation and yeah and i think the main the main piece of advice is just have fun find you know find a project that you love and just have fun with it so this second step is it's quite a small step kind of intuitive again but it's something that's very important when it comes to writing a dissertation and that is planning now you might be thinking oh of course you know we're going to mention planning but this is something that's not strict you know you don't have to stick to it but it's important to do this because in a dissertation you don't have structured hours like you do with lectures in undergrad we had however many lectures a week and we would learn a particular topic so many times in that week then you'd have example sheets and you would have this repetitive learning of a specific module now what i tried to do was plan hours for my dissertation so that it would integrate each week because you'll find that if you start doing something maybe on one week and then leave it three weeks, you'll have forgotten what you did previously. So I think it's important that you go back to your dissertation at least every week, if not every two weeks. It depends, obviously closer to the deadline, you'll be doing it a lot more. But before the deadline, it's quite easy to just think, oh, my dissertation isn't due in until this day and then do it closer to that. But something that I found really helpful was doing research and doing all the reading beforehand and making sure I had an allotted time each week to doing my dissertation so it's important to not leave your dissertation to the last minute like a lot of people do <laughs> so make sure you do like a bit of a brief plan it's not even a plan really it's just 
block out some time each week to say, okay, I'm going to work on my dissertation. And it can be as flexible as you want. It could literally just be, this is how many hours I'm going to spend each week working on my dissertation. But have a look at the time you have between now and your dissertation sub- submission date. It comes around quite fast. And having spent some time before your, you know, before like the month before your deadline, doing some reading, it really helps. So yeah, just block out some time each week to work on your dissertation. It's okay if you spend more time each week. Just make sure you're consistent with it, I think is is the most important. Okay, point number three is read before you write. This is something that I made the mistake of doing in my master's year. I was kind of very eager to, to write because I loved the writing element of my third year dissertation that I would kind of read very little and then try write about it. That led to a lot of stress. A bit of a story time, honestly I'm just going to add this in here just so people know that dissertations don't aren't always smooth sailing. I remember choosing my dissertation topic for my master's and making this mistake of reading too little before I wrote and I ended up just having this big breakdown and I was like, I do not know what to do, I don't know anything about this topic. I even looked at changing my dissertation, my, my thesis topic midway through because I had made this massive mistake of not reading enough. (laughs) So this is something that I would say is very, very important. Before you decide to even write anything in your dissertation, you need to do a good amount of reading. And this is to ensure you get a good base knowledge of the topic that you're learning about. So for my undergrad, I basically had a, a lot of it was a computational element, but I spent some time before even coding looking at notes, looking at papers, seeing what area that I wanted to go into for that. My master's was more of a literature review, which required a lot more reading, which is probably why I had this kind of panic because I didn't do enough reading. Now, on the topic of reading, I'm going to talk about things that I found very helpful coming from a maths degree where I it's difficult really because as, as a maths student, we don't read a lot of research papers really in lectures. It's just we have lecture notes. This is we get taught these lecture notes. And there isn't that element of reading as much. For me anyway, my undergrad, we never really got taught how to read a a mathematical research paper. And I think that's something that's really important to to learn how to do. And I'm going to talk about my mistakes and things that I found helpful when it came to reading literature. So the first one is I would find a research paper on the topic that my dissertation was on and I would read the introduction, abstract and conclusion. Now you might think, well, you're missing the whole body of the, you know, the whole body of the article or the paper. Why are you doing this? So the abstract itself gives an overview of the paper. This is important because let's say you have a vision for your dissertation and you read the abstract and it doesn't go into an area that you want to talk about. Great, you can read the abstract put the paper aside, find another one that has a better abstract. Introduction and conclusion. Introduction itself, I think, is really important to just understand the topic. A lot of the time, research papers miss out a lot of detail. And for me, I would just read the introduction, see if I could understand what it is that they were talking about, go find other papers that may talk about those specific areas. It's just a nice way of reading maths without complicating it too much. So introductions for me were a chance for me to understand a bit more about the topic that they're then going to talk about in the main body of the text. I think it's important to, to do that is make sure you understand the introduction before diving further. Then in terms of the conclusion, that's just to see what the results of the paper found. And if those results align with something you want to talk about in your dissertation, then great, read the whole body of the text. I spent a lot of time on my master's reading papers that probably weren't that helpful. Uh, And that's because I would just dive into it and think, right, straight away, I'm just going to read this paper and see if it's applicable. To start with, you need to just get get a grasp of what it is you want to talk about in your dissertation and see if that paper actually helps with that. It's easy to read too much and then overwhelm yourself with the amount of maths that's that's there. Now, I just mentioned papers, so research papers. Something that's very important in terms of reading anyway is making sure you use a variety of different sources. This is great for the reading element but also for the marks that you'll get for your references. A big part of marks for a mathematical dissertation comes from your variety of resources. So that could be research papers, books, articles, journals. Not only will it get you marks for your references and looking like you're a well-rounded 
well-read student. It will also help you learn a bit more as well because you're getting information from a variety of different sources. Now, obviously, when it comes to referencing, you ideally want to be referencing research papers, articles, journals and books because they are, I guess, the gold standard for reading. But something that I found really, really helpful, and this is something that I highly recommend any math student to do, or any STEM student, I guess, is find lecture notes on the topic, find any PhD theses on the topic, anything that is less technical than articles. Now, this is something that was important when you first start your dissertation, because it's very easy, like I did, to read loads of research papers, get overwhelmed with the amount of maths that's in that area, and kind of have this, you don't really have a structure. Something that was really helpful for me for both years, find lecture notes that go into the topic itself or lecture slides because they're already structured, so that gives you a nice structure. And PhD thesis is honestly so helpful. They really, really helped me for my undergrad dissertation. It helped me get a structure because a PhD thesis, the introduction, you know, the first few pages of a PhD thesis are written in a way that you're, you're going into a lot of detail around the specific area, which articles and journals miss a lot of the time because they just expect you to know about the topic. So a PhD thesis or even undergrad dissertations or master's theses, obviously do not copy, <laughs> do not copy them, reference them if you do use them. I reference the PhD thesis that I used for my undergrad because that was really, really helpful for me. I had already had a nice structure and I was quite happy with that, but this thesis then delved into different areas within the thesis and I was like, I'm going to going to look into one of those areas so it's quite nice to to have that structure articles and journals are great once you've grasped the concepts but first before you read any articles and journals i mean go ahead you you might find them absolutely you know easy but for me it was reading things that are much simpler much more explanation to get a good you know, good knowledge of of the topic that that i'm studying so while we are on the topic of reading make sure you document everything that you have read because I made this massive mistake in my undergrad and I had a lot of papers and I had them all like, you know, I had them all saved, but I didn't, I didn't keep track of which reference helped me learn a specific area. So something I would highly recommend doing is once you've read a paper, once you've read some, you know, a thesis, write it down, write down what it is you, you looked at and then bullet point what it was that you learned in that specific reference because this will also make your life easier when it comes to writing because you can reference immediately which I'll get on to but it also means that when it comes to understanding what you've done previously side note it's very easy to read all these all these papers and have all this information and then think oh my gosh like what what did what did I where did I read this specific topic I learned about this thing but which of these resources did I learn it in so it's very important to keep a document of all the <laughs> of all the papers that you've read all the resources that you've read it's kind of like keeping a little diary as well like you can say on you know this is the day that I read this paper this is what I learned now obviously mathematical dissertations there may be an element of coming up with your own maths and that's something that can be quite scary and quite daunting because you go through university learning lecture notes that are taught by the lecturer. They are solid, they are there, they are known. You do example sheets that you know have a solution to them. And it's rare that you have to come up with your own maths. Now, something that I found quite helpful, I obviously was doing a literature review type style for my master's thesis. But I wanted to add my own personal you know, touch on it. So I would find a paper that goes into a specific topic and I would ask myself how can I change this for my own research. So for example my master's thesis was on wave attractors in rotating and stratified fluids and there was a, a section on stratification as you can guess in the title. Essentially all that did was it said okay here's a stratification profile and then there was a step to find the ray tracing. Now don't worry if this doesn't make any sense I'm going to be making a video about my whole dissertation and talking about the maths behind it for those of you that are interested but essentially I had this you know, this, this research paper went into a, it had a stratification profile, did some of this maths, and then at the end it came out with a formula for the ray tracing of the wave attractor. Now, what I did was I said, okay, how can I change that profile to get a different wave attractor? And that's quite neat because it might be something that's not even been mentioned in research before, that you've just come up with your own example and got 
a result to it and you can talk about that and say oh well if this happens then this is the this is the result i obviously did applied maths so it might be very different for pure maths i would just say if it comes to making your own maths have a look at research papers and constantly ask yourself how can i change how can i change this equation to to give a different result and don't spend too long on something i made that mistake of thinking oh this profile would be really cool to analyze and there was no analytic solution to it okay so those are my main pointers on the reading aspect of your dissertation i think that the timing is very difficult because your dissertation is not a case of read then write you have you read you have to read in order to write but then when you're writing, you will also be reading. There isn't really a time frame on reading per se, but say, you know, for me, I think I started my dissertation in January and the submission was April, so about four months. I think I spent maybe around a month just reading uh, and getting all the information that I needed, then started to do a little bit of writing whilst constantly, you know, reading things on top of it. Make sure you've done a lot of reading before it comes to writing and writing itself can take a while. So I would recommend maybe like a month of reading if you have a big enough gap between your submission deadline and when you start. Okay, so we are moving on to point number four, which is writing your dissertation. So the first very important point is make sure when you are writing, you have a clear and coherent structure. Now, as I said, this might be something that you've thought of yourself. You might have done some reading and thought, this is how I'm gonna structure my dissertation. Or it might be that you've seen a similar thesis or master's dissertation and thought, I'm gonna structure it that way as well. But it's very important to have a clear and coherent structure in your dissertation because a massive amount of the marks come from that. And you essentially want, you want it to flow. Each chapter, you want it to flow. And that's the most important part when it comes to the overall structure is making sure that when the reader is reading it, it flows nicely and it's enjoyable for them to read. In terms of the format, I stuck to having an abstract, like an overview of the whole dissertation, then an introduction, then I had the main kind of body of text and then the conclusion, which is quite intuitive. Something that I found really helpful and something that I would highly recommend doing. You have your introduction to your dissertation, but then having an introduction to the like the preliminary material that you need for this dissertation. So the idea behind this introduction to the preliminary material is that if someone hasn't learned this topic before, they get a good understanding. And it's also really neat. I found it really, really neat in both of my dissertations to just have this section of, okay, this is what we're gonna talk about. And I'm gonna give you preliminary stuff about the topic and we're gonna ease you into it so that it flows really nicely. And also it helps you, if you can write it correctly, it shows you've got a good understanding of the base topics. And a lot of the time people just jump into an area of math without actually grasping the underlying concepts. So I think it's important to have them in there just to start with. It doesn't have to be too long. I think for me in my undergrad, I, mine was on statistical mechanics. So I did this whole kind of introduction to statistical mechanics and just talked about some of the intro stuff. I'm gonna say this because I say it in a few of my other videos, but my dissertation for both my undergrad and masters are both on my LinkedIn. They're just under like the section of where my education is. So if you're interested, have a look if you know if you want uh, an idea for for a dissertation topic or you know structure uh, please don't copy them because <laughs> you'll get done for plagiarism but they are there if you if you want to want to use them read them my linkedin is just my name same as my youtube channel so yeah i'll link it below anyway if you're if you are interested in terms of the introduction abstract and conclusion write all of these last don't make the mistake of thinking you know what you're going to talk about in your whole the whole like main body of your dissertation because trust me you won't when it comes to writing things will change they will massively change so abstract obviously that's intuitive you you write that last and that's just because that's just an overview of what you've done in your dissertation an introduction itself is kind of just introducing you to the to the topic in words and i think once you've written your dissertation you'll know what to write something that i added in my introduction was saying what we cover in each of the chapters and i think that's a nice way of preparing the reader for what they're going to read and conclusion again that's just something last because you need to write that after you've written your whole dissertation so do those things last don't don't make the mistake of thinking oh they're really easy i'm going to do them first because then you'll stress because you won't know anything so leave them until last again in terms of the structure make sure you split up your dissertation into sections i, I think it's very important not to have like two long sections even if you have a long section split them up into subsections it's just easier for the reader because if you have so many pages on just one section without splitting that up into subsections, it becomes a lot of information for the reader and doesn't flow as nicely. So make sure you have some nice breaks in between in your writing. 
And another thing that's very important is referencing. Make sure you, when it comes to writing, like I said, take the diary that you've written of all the references that you have and just input them as, so as soon as you write put in the reference that you've used. Because trust me, when it comes to referencing and, th and that being the final thing, you will, it will, oh my gosh, it'll save you so much time. Don't make the mistake of writing your whole thing and then thinking, oh, I'll just add the, the references later. Because that wastes a lot of time and it's a lot of stress <laughs> that you don't need. So make sure you just add the reference in, references in as you go. In terms of what you're going to write your dissertation on in terms of the software, so, Obviously, as a math student, we can't really write it in Word because we are limited with what we can do in Word. Most universities suggest using LaTeX and I love LaTeX. Honestly, it was a pain to begin with, but once you understand how it works, it's really, really nice. For both my undergrad and masters, I used just the kind of built-in text editor, which I'll put a video on the screen of how that kind of looks when I was writing my dissertation. And the only issue with that was when it came to compile, when I had a lot of images in there, it took a while and recently during my graduate job currently I have had to do a lot of mathematical research and I found Overleaf which is like an online version of LaTeX really and it's really really neat the only issue with it is there can sometimes be kind of bugs it's up to you really how you know which platform you want to use but definitely use LaTeX it's so neat it takes a bit of time to kind of <laughs> get used to it and get the structure and everything again if you are writing a maths dissertation block a bit of time out for understanding LaTeX if you don't already because it, it takes a bit of time to, to get your head around it I am tempted to kind of post the source code for my dissertation on here. If that's something that people would find useful, let me know uh, and I will I will do that. But yeah, definitely use LaTeX. It's, it's a really neat way of writing maths. And when it's right, it looks so good. I use it all the time because it's so cool. <laughs> but yeah, so definitely use LaTeX. On the topic of LaTeX, make sure you back up your dissertation. Cannot stress this enough. During my master's dissertation, my laptop crashed. I had not backed up my dissertation, my thesis anywhere because I, I write thing, most things just on paper anyway in math so I forget to back things up. It was like a half a day of stress because I had not backed up my dissertation anywhere. And it's important to not only back up the PDF version, but if you are using LaTeX, back up all of the source code files, like the text file, everything. It's okay to have your PDF, but to rewrite that then in LaTeX is a pain. So just make sure you, whatever it is you're using, if it's OneDrive, if, if it's GitHub, anything, just make sure you're backing up your dissertation because you do not want any undue stress. But this section was on the writing aspect. The main thing I would say is find a good structure and then use the, the sources, the resources that you read uh, and integrate that into into each of the the sections there's not much more that i can say really in terms of that i think it's just important for you to read find topics that you think okay i'm going to talk about this and then add it in and again looking at theses masters projects all stuff like that is a really nice way of getting that structure and learning how to write the maths in a nice nice way make sure that when you are writing the maths everything makes sense make sure that it's all kind of formatted correctly and it looks neat what i'm going to do now is talk about what i'd like to call final touches and these are the things that when it comes to writing your dissertation this is something that i kind of looked at maybe towards the end once i'd written my dissertation it wasn't something i worried too much about until until the end and i'm just going to fire off all of the important final touches that i have and this is just to make your dissertation look really nice. Now the reason I'm saying this last is because the previous point four which is you know the writing that gives you the main chunk of marks. This point number five which is the final touches gives you maybe a, an additional few marks here and there and it's important to get the writing aspect done before you move on to the final touches. Now obviously maths you're going to have some equations in there something that's very important is only number your equations in your dissertation if you refer to them at any point in the text because this is what happens in LaTeX if you write kind of begin the equation write the equation I think it automatically puts a, a number with it like a reference with it I'm, I've forgotten what the word is and what you don't want to happen is in your entire dissertation to have all of your equations numbered because there's no point in them being numbered unless you're referring to them. Now, if you're using plots in your dissertation, which I assume most people probably will be, just, you know, applied mathematics, especially if you're doing that, make sure your figure size, you know, your title and, and everything on that plot is visible in the dissertation because it's very easy for me writing in Python. I'd have this Python plot, say this big, 
and I could see it great when it was an A4 on my laptop, I could read the title, everything, but then when you come to shrink it down on your dissertation itself, that title could becomes very small, very hard to read. You want to, and this was something that I got told by my supervisor in third year, to make sure you do, because it's really annoying if you don't, is to make sure that like your axes are massive, you can see the points, you can see yeah, everything clearly if you do shrink it down. And it's something that you probably don't think about because you just think, oh, it's just a plot. But make sure when it comes to exporting plots from Python or just generally if you have anything, just adjust the text to make it bigger. Um, hopefully you'll notice that in my third year dissertation because I, I tried to just make everything massive. So you could, when it shrunk down, it was the same, a similar text size to the, the main body of the text. So yeah, that's that's very important. And I mentioned that because my supervisor told me, so <laughs> make sure you do that. Now on the topic of figures and putting in plots, this is also something that my supervisor, my other supervisor told me in my third year. And that's making sure that when you label the figure um, and put kind of words to explain what's going on in the figure, that you make it long enough. I made the mistake when I did my first draft in third year of basically saying five word sentence and that was it. And my supervisor said this to everybody because everybody made the same mistake. He was like, there's, there's a label there for a reason. Go into detail about it. Talk about what is happening. Don't write a whole paragraph. But, you know, if you look at my dissertation, you'll, you'll notice that there are parts where I have quite a bit of text. And that's because I'm explaining what's going on in the figure. Don't make them the same mistake that a lot of people do, which is not putting enough text in that label. Make sure you have properly explained that plot and, and what's going on in that plot. The kind of idea is that when you look, when you go to that specific area where the plot and label is, you, you with no context, can uh, you can understand what's going on in that. So make sure that's what's happening in your dissertation. In terms of referencing, I would highly recommend looking at what your university uses as their referencing style and then basically just sticking with that throughout, making sure that your all of your references are exactly the same, it's the same referencing style, because it just looks neat if you do. Again, as I said about splitting up into subsections, make sure that those subsec subsections have appropriate titles. Again, with the sections themselves, make sure that when you look at your table of contents, which is something that I included and I highly recommend you to include, the titles themselves actually correspond to what's being, ta what's being talked about in that specific section. The very final thing that I'm gonna say in terms of the final touches is just checking how your university or your department likes you to write in your dissertation so whether they want you to refer to yourself as I, we, I omitted both of them for both my dissertations and it read n nicely. I asked my master's supervisor this in my master's year uh, and he said if you use the word we it suggests there's more than one of you doing the dissertation which isn't true then it's referring to yourself as one uh, and I did refer to myself as like one does this and if one considers this and it, it sounds quite like I don't know posh I guess but it does read quite well so yeah just check with your supervisor what style they want in in their um in their dissertation I also think that another final thing to say is listen to your supervisor as well because I think I'm pretty sure it's usually your supervisor that marks your dissertation itself so stick to what they what they want. Most supervisors are quite generous with, with the flexibility that they offer in that specific area. So yeah that has been I guess my general advice on writing a dissertation, writing a thesis. I hope this video has been useful. I've tried to stick to the things that I highly recommend after learning the things that you don't do uh, during, during a dissertation. So hopefully this video has been useful to you. If you have any questions feel free to comment them down below and I will do my best to answer. Again if you are interested in reading either of my dissertations they are on my LinkedIn. I'll put a link in the description if you are interested but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.